إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يدع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يحسهما فلا يضر إلا نفسه uh, You can open up these curtains so you can hear me There's no microphones not working today. So if the sisters want, they can open up the curtains because one of the somebody just complained. Huh? Can I open it? No, let the sisters decide if they if the sisters want to open it, they can open it. So in Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu and Astain who and a stop him. When a shadow and la ilaha illallah who wahda who la sharikala. When a shadow and a Muhammad and Abdu who are Rasul. أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يدع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يحسهما فلا يضر إلا نفسه أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم الحمني رشدي وعزني من شر نفسي امين يا رب العالمين اللهم امين يا رب Today inshallah I want to talk about uh, marriage but not marriage for the people that are married but for the inevitability of the fact that a lot of our children are growing up and they will be getting married. And certain things that we should be aware of as we see our young children grow up older and the things that happen in the American society, especially with Muslims, when we have daughters, uh, when we have sons, you know, a lot of us are getting married, a lot of us are not getting married, there's a lot of issues. But I wanted to touch upon just a few of the issues in regards to how parents need to handle the issue of marriage, what they need to know about marriage for their children. Uh, the, microwave, the microphone's not working, so I'm talking out loud as much as I can. The sisters can move forward, or they can move this curtain also. Uh, and uh, that's the best we can do it right now for this week. Uh, so, in regards to our children, you know, one of the, the maqasid of the sharia, one of the purposes of the sharia is to create families that are stable, that are loving, and children growing up in these loving families. This is one of the maqasids of the sharia, one of the intents of sharia is, you know, even the saying of the Prophet wasallam, half the deen is marriage. So, one of the intents of Islamic law is to create happy happy marriages and parents play a big role in that as well as do the children themselves and so let's talk about a few things that are happening in our society and how we can best understand these because a lot of the parents in our community and around our community they have daughters in their teen years their sons are in the teen years and you know, with the hormones and everything running, how can we best understand how to deal with uh, this is a very important decision, the decision of who you marry, uh, especially for these children that are growing up. The first thing I want to mention is there is a very interesting book out. It's called, Till Faith Does Us Apart. That's the name of the book. And the reason I mention this book is because, according to this book, 42% of the marriages in America are done outside your religion or outside your faith. That means that Muslims, a lot of Muslim men, not necessarily that many of the girls, but a lot of the Muslim boys, teenage boys, when they get in their 20s. And by the way, as you get older, every year you get older, right? The chances you're going to marry outside your faith increases. Okay, and by the way, this lady, she did surveys of Muslims too. She did surveys of Muslims, of Jews, of Christians, and just understood the very idea of 
interfaith marriage. So this is the first thing I want to deal with because I want to contrast this with our own intercultural marriages and the problems we face there. Um, but what I wanted to mention was is that uh, when people marry other religions, when people marry into other religions, the chances of divorce easily, easily increase by 50 percent. Easily increased. And this is something, because a lot of sisters say, oh, how come the boys can marry Ahlul Kitab, but the girls cannot marry Ahlul Kitab? Why? why? This is not fair. <coughs> what I want to say about this issue, which parents should know, and they should explain this to their children. There are two, three things I want to mention about this. Number one, interfaith marriages generally do not work. This is an established fact. Because what happens is when you're in love and you're when you know when you think love can conquer all and you get married with somebody of another faith, what does that mean? That generally means you don't consider your faith that important. And she doesn't consider her faith that important. But lo and behold, you get older, especially when you hit around forty. You have children and you start questioning. What, am, what is my faith? What do I believe in? It happens to every individual. Sometimes it's called the midlife crisis, where a person asks, what am I about? You know, what is my religion? What is my identity? You may not ask about your religion when you're 20 years old or in your teens. You may think that love can conquer it all. But the reality is that when you're going to be compromising about Eid and you're going to be a little bit upset about Christmas, especially, and by the way, you know, a lot of uh, couples, what they do is they say, we're going to teach them both religions. We're going to teach them Islam and Christianity. And we'll let the c c children decide. By the way, which is not allowed in Islam. Even if, by the way, uh, if a Muslim marries Ahlul Kitab, which is done by many conditions, by the way. And I want this to be clear. Uh, let me first actually mention this issue. The issue of marrying Ahlul Kitab is not that you pick up any girl from any school and marry her and she's Ahlul Kitab. She's not Ahlul Kitab till she is actually a Bible thumper type Christian. She has to know her Bible to be a Ahlul Kitab. She has to be a practicing Christian to be Ahlul Kitab. It's not just, oh, you know, because a lot of Muslim boys are marrying Christian girls. And like I said, statistically, when you're not able to share in the same holidays, when you're not able to share in the same customs, when the boy is going to the masjid and his wife is not going with him and she's going to the church, the chances of that marriage lasting long term is, the, the divorce rate is already 50%, but with these issues on top of it, it's even 50% more. So people need to explain to their daughters especially, and to the boys. To the boys, the Ahlul Kitab is not just any girl that you find in your science lab or in school and you say, oh, she, she, her, her, you know, she's Christian. It's not like that. She's not Christian unless she's going to the church and does what the church teaches her to do. And by the way, this is not me saying this. Our Salaf, our, the Salaf of the Ummah, the, 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 the scholars of the old who have looked at the word Ahlul Kitab, what does it mean to be the people of the book? It should be pretty logical. People of the book doesn't mean that you inherited the book from your grandparents. It means that you're, you're of the people that believe in the book. So this is one thing that I wanted to mention and uh, be very clear about. That even when our children, because a lot of boys are marrying Christian girls, who they're underlying Christian quote-unquote girls, and they're not marrying the Muslim girls. And there are hundreds of Muslim girls in our community who are not married for many reasons, and among one of them is that that the boys, they, they look to other girls. That's one issue that I wanted to mention. But I also wanted to mention, uh, okay, I'm going to come back to uh, some of these issues. Um, so, you know, marriage is a very crucial decision. And the fact is that a lot of times we make very irrational decisions, even in crucial decisions. <laughs> and like I said, one of the maqasid of the sharia is to bring families together, to make families that will work, functional families, loving families that are going to grow together. <clears throat> and what does that mean? That means that we should make marriage for the Muslims easy. We should make marriage 
for the Muslims easy, not put hurdles. Because a lot of times our culture puts hurdles in marriages that in this place of America, where it's so easy to do zina, it's so easy to do the wrong things, that if we put, start putting hurdles into doing the right things, then people will make the wrong choices. And that's happening. And so I want to go over some of the things that happens in America. Some of the things that happens with the Muslim community in America. One of the things that happens, and I'll actually tell you a story about this, is that sometimes a girl in America is forced to marry somebody who she's not happy with. She doesn't want to marry him. She loves someone else, but she doesn't want to tell her parents, I love someone else. I had a, a friend. He was a doctor. He was a podiatrist. He was my roommate. He was in his residency years. So, you know, when he finished his residency, he did his nikah. He got married. And the story continues that he found out that the girl actually loved someone else. She loved someone else. But she married him because to make her parents happy. She married him because she couldn't face her parents and tell her parents that I like this other guy. And what happened? They got married and, and the first night was strange and you know how it goes. And then they finally got divorced and it finally came out that she liked someone else. This is not just, by the way, this is not just one case. I have seen this in my own lifetime multiple times. There was a sister I was in college with. When I was in Chicago, um, there was a sister. She had helped one brother convert to Islam. And because she had helped him to convert to Islam, she felt a certain inclination towards him or liked him. But she married somebody else. And she actually had this discussion with me that I really like this guy. I want to marry this guy. But she was scared to tell her parents. She was scared to tell her parents that I want to marry this guy who she helped convert to Islam, bring to Islam. She really loved him, but she married somebody else. She was from the Palestinian origin. She was very active in MSA, but she was miserable in her marriage. What am I trying to say here? One thing that's very important is that you got to, and by the way, I want to make something clear. Our sisters and brothers, they're divided into two categories, two ages. Either you get married or you find, and by the way, I want to be very clear. There are parents in our community who do not know that their children like each other. It's a reality in our community, and it's okay, because what else are they going to do, the kids? But I'm going to come to that issue later. What I want to talk about is that the parents should be, allow their children to talk to them have communication with their kids. If you think that your children, because there are two age groups, and there are two types of, especially sisters, but brothers can fall into these two groups also. One group of sisters, they see that their life starts with getting married. It's, I call it the Bollywood syndrome. One group of sisters, they see that my life starts when I get married. And generally, this group of sisters, they don't care so much about their careers. <coughs> they don't care so much about, you know, their, their, their careers and, and getting good jobs and being in the forefront of their careers. They're usually very active in MSA or they're active in the community. And they see the beginning of their life was, was, uh, it starts in marriage. And so when the hormones start running, they start looking for a guy. They're in MSA, they might fall in love with someone in MSA. And so what I'm trying to say is, either the girls or the boys, but specifically the girls, they get married in their early years, between 19 to 23, 24, they get married in the MSA years. If you do not get married in the MSA years, chances are you're not going to get married till you're down in your 30s, and that's the second group of sisters, which is usually the more career-minded sisters. Maybe some of these sisters didn't have good role models in their own houses. They thought that marriage is more of a problem. Maybe their brothers and sisters didn't have good marriages, so they kept delaying it. Or girls sometimes are very indecisive. I've seen a lot of sisters who 
are very indecisive who they want to marry. And this is a whole different issue, but I'm not going to go into it. But a lot of times, fathers and mothers need to know this, that a lot of times girls are indecisive. They just can't decide who they want to marry. And so the fathers and sisters need to sit down and say, okay, you need to choose someone now, it's been time. But that's a separate issue. I was saying one group of sisters and brothers, they get married early, and they're usually the more religious. And especially amongst the girls, they feel that their life starts from marriage. And then if you don't get married, then you finish college, and then you go into school, I mean, you go into work, and once you're in your workplace, and once you have your jobs, and once you have your career, whether you're brother or sister, you're busy. You know, you're tired, you're busy. You don't really have that much of a social life, especially if you're practicing Islam. You don't have that much of a social life. Your parents don't know that many people. You know more people through Facebook <clears throat> and through your online community. The children know more people than the parents do. So how are the parents supposed to help their daughters and sons get married? So the first group either gets married at a young age, or another group of people, they don't even think of marriage till they're in their late 30s. And that's mostly also because the mother, usually, you know, the mother is the one that will keep saying to the daughter especially, oh, you got to get married, I'm so worried. So many moms across America, so many moms across America are so worried about their daughters getting married, not able to get married. So many mothers across the whole country. But you've got to realize that you've got to start thinking about these issues when they're in their teen years. You've got to start talking to your daughter when she's 17 and 18 about getting married. You've got to open the doors that if they find somebody that they should feel comfortable coming to you and talking to you. And this leads to a lot of, again, I don't have time today because of the thunderstorms that are going to be coming, and I really wanted to talk about this topic in detail, and I've only talked about like one or two of the points that I wanted to talk about, but what I want to now get into is, okay, so I want you to understand these two, you could say groups, age groups, young age, they get married, and then the older age, they get married. Now, I want to give the parents something to think, something to think about, an alternative. An alternative that might work for your kids. That I think personally is a good alternative. These two models are good models to work with. And the first model is because, again, the Sharia wants people to get married as soon as possible. And there's many benefits to this. I'm not going to go into the details of the benefits of this psychologically, emotionally, physically, just in every way because of so many reasons. When, when people get married in their thir 30s, at the later years, the chances of the personalities meshing together is a lot harder than when they get married earlier. But, I will say, the divorce rates are not different, no matter what age group, meaning we have a very bad divorce rate in the Muslim community, about 50%, regardless of which age you get married in. If you get married too early, that comes with its own set of problems. That's understood. If you don't get married early, that comes with its own set of problems that's also understood. But I want to give an alternative to the parents. To the parents of the, of the boy, <coughs> to the parents of the girl, that they should consider this is one option. Because if your child comes to you and says, I like this girl, you should know what are the options before you. One option is that get them married. Do the nikah. The advantage of this is that at least his eyes, you know, in, uh, in some of the Arab worlds, they have this idea of katul kitab and then the, uh, the nikah, meaning they do the legal marriage, but they, the girl stays with the parents. And they do the legal marriage, they do the nikah, they're married, but the father continues to pay for the girl in her school. And they do the legal marriage, and the father continues to pay for the boy in his school until they're both done, and then they can move and shift and live together. This is a very good alternative, because in America, you know, somebody says, I like this girl, I want to marry her, either he feels comfortable telling the parents, or he doesn't. And by the way, if you think your son or daughter loves someone, and he and she is going to listen to you, to leave them, <coughs> guess what? 
ain't going to happen. Once they have seriously committed themselves that I want to marry this girl and I want to marry this boy and they're both, commu they're both communicating and they both love each other and they're emotionally involved, the chances that when you find out that this is the situation and you say to them, no, 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 I want you to leave her or no, 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 I want you to leave him, it ain't going to happen. Should I say it again? It ain't going to happen. Now you have two choices. Either you can be involved and make the best of the situation, or you cannot be involved and let them keep making more mistakes if it was a mistake. You have to make this choice because this happens with so many parents every single day. Now, inshallah, time is running out. I will uh, complete what I want to say, some of the things in my next khutbah. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم وليسار المسلمين والمسلمين أحمد وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد The second model If you're not comfortable with doing the nikah You can still be comfortable with doing an engagement there is an idea that goes around that in Islam there's no such thing as engagement. This is not correct. Khatba, khatba is mentioned in Quran and it means engagement. It means engagement. If you don't want to get your children married because they love each other, at least get them engaged because why? Their eyes will be restrained to that particular person. Then at least he's not looking at every girl that goes by. Then he's just focused on that one girl. And he knows that in order to get married, he has to accomplish certain goals, which will actually help him be focused. He'll have a goal in front of him. Now again, I had a lot of other things to talk about. Time is running out. But one of the things that I want to encourage the parents to do, because again, the problem when it comes to marriage and our daughters and our sons, is our children know more people than the parents know. It used to be the parents knew more people and the children knew less the parents would easily find someone for their kids. But today, it's reversed. The kids know more people than you do. So one thing that I want to mention, by the way, is that when your children grow up, and by the way, parents should, mothers and fathers, both should talk to their daughters and their sons about their future marriage. It's very, very important to do that. It's very, very important to do that. Now, one thing that I want to mention is there's a lot of websites out there like zawaj.com, singlemuslims.com, all these other websites that are out there. If your child reaches a certain threshold, let's say they pass the age of 25, 26, and they haven't gotten married, it might be a good idea that you start looking into these online websites because they're too busy. If you're too busy and you're busy in your career and you're busy in your jobs and you don't have a social life that much, well, the one way parents can help is, you know, people see it as, oh, you know, online, that's kind of like, it's not good. But it's not. The reality is you do everything on Facebook. You do everything online, but you don't want to find a spouse online. It's just things are changing. I mean, you know, it used to be, and this is another one thing, that people want that, the, the girl's family, especially in the Desi and the Arab world, by the way, that the girl's family is shy to ask or shy to say, hey, you know, I have a daughter that needs to get married. But when you look at the life of the companions of the Prophet Rumaysa, who the Prophet said she's the most intelligent girl, she proposed the marriage. Khadija, she proposed the marriage. So many of the women, they proposed the marriage. There's no shame in, in saying, I have a daughter that needs to get married. Or there's no shame in saying there's a boy. I have a boy that needs to get married. But here's the irony of it. Again, I don't have time. But the irony is, we don't have a problem with our, bro with our boys, especially, marrying a, a, a non-Muslim girl. But sometimes we have a bigger problem that, oh, how can a... Pakistani girl marry an Indian guy. 
Even though we're all part of the same community, even though we're all part of the same masjid, even though we're all part of the same Muslim ummah, a lot of times parents give a very bad example when it comes to being Muslim, especially when it comes to marriage, where parents will outright say, oh, don't talk to me about that particular group of people. And, you know, what's most interesting is that when you're in a masjid, and you know how they have elections, or they have one group, or they have their cliques in the masjid, right? So, the, the boy, his, he's part of one clique, his parents are part of one clique, and the girl, they're in the same masjid, the same community, she's part of another clique, and you know what's interesting, I'll share, I'll, it reminds me of this fact, is that people are inclined to marry interfaith to some degree in America. But what they're not inclined to do in America is a Republican marry a Democrat. Or a Democrat marry a Republican. There are very few instances, like percentage-wise, I forget what it is, but if you're a Republican, you're going to marry a Republican. Which also, by the way, dictates your religious tendencies, it does. But if you're a Democrat, you're no way going to marry a Republican. Okay? And vice versa. It's the same way for us as, oh, what was party get? Oh, he's part of that party, it's like Republican. And I'm part of the Democrat. And now uh, my daughter can't marry into that, that group. You know, it's, uh, psychologically, I'll share something with you very interesting. Uh, uh, they did this uh, survey, right? And this is the, the, one of the last points I'm going to mention, inshallah, because I know time's running out. But this is a very interesting survey that was done. So uh, they give people two choices. They say, you can get $75,000 a year. No, 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 sorry. You'll get $70,000 a year. $70,000 a year. And everyone in the office will get less than you. Everyone in the office will get less than you, and you are the highest paying person, $75,000. Or, uh, sorry, not $70,000, $70,000. But you're the highest person paid in the job. Or, we'll give you $75,000, but there are also people that are paid $80,000. But you're still amongst the top, you know. Now, when people were surveyed, which one would you choose? Would you rather make 70000 but you make more than everyone yes. in the office? Or would you rather have 75000 where there are still people that make more than you? 75. Most people chose 70000 as long as I can say I make the most. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because it's the same thing with marriage. You know, ha part of happiness, you know, there's a lot of studies about happiness, by the way. Tremendous amount of research work on what makes people happy. But a lot of times what makes us happy is our, in us in relationship to others. I'll give you an example. And this is a better example than what I just gave. Somebody who's in prison, but everybody loves him in prison. Let's say he's the strongest guy in prison, right? Or he's a leader in the prison. Now he's a leader in the prison. I mean, he, he rules in his prison. He, now in relationship to his environment, he's happy. But if you tell him, oh, you got parole, and he no longer is a leader outside, you think he wants to leave prison? He wouldn't want, it. He wouldn't want that. So he doesn't necessarily think it's the best thing for him, because he wants to be a leader in the prison. So what I'm trying to say is the same thing is with marriage. We look at marriage in these same terms. We want to see, oh, you know, especially, we are so picky when it comes to marriage as a community, right? has to be the... The, the top earner, he has to be this, or she has to be this, and especially girls of the second category, the ones that don't get married early, they're even so picky that th they have a tendency, and I'm not saying this as, as an insulting someone, because my sister's like this. So, my own sister's like this, okay? It's very hard to, uh, it's been very hard to make her sit down and, and say yes to someone because she's just so picky. <laughs> Because career-minded girls are like that. And so the point I'm trying to make is, is that it's part of jahiliya, it's part of ignorance, that we're okay with our boys marrying non-Muslims, but we have a problem with our boys and our girls marrying each other in the same community. 
And you know what ha what's so interesting? Is that people make efforts to marry their children outside the community. I had a call from New Jersey once. A mother said, oh, there's, there's no one good in New Jersey. No one good in New Jersey. Do you know how many Muslims are in New Jersey? <laughs> Can you find me somebody in Chicago? <laughs> right? There's no one good in New Jersey, seriously? But we look, because we can see them, because we know them, we automatically bring them down in our eyes. The reality is, this is the reality, brothers and sisters, you have to face the fact that there might be a good chance your son and daughter will like somebody in the community because they're growing up together. And we should give those opportunities, by the way. Uh, again, time, is running, time has run out, so uh, I might continue this topic next time. But I do want to say, for the, for, this, for the people that are getting older, online dating, or not online dating, sorry, but online nikah programs are a very good option. Do not feel embarrassed about that. Go and sign up your daughter. Talk on behalf of your daughter. You can talk. You can put her a picture up or and then talk as if you're the daughter. Nope. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, 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 and find somebody because the daughter is too busy. She's too busy or she's too shy. Do it for her. Sign her up, you know, in, in two, three sites and inshallah, Allah will find somebody. But uh, there's a lot more on this topic that then I can, uh, uh, I mean, there's a lot more that I wanted to say, but inshallah we will end here. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adhaba na. Rabbana gulamna nusna wa illam taghfil lana wa tarhamna lana kunna min al-khasirin. Allahumma tajal khilafat al-muslimin fi hadhi al-ard. Allahumma gfil lana, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna tahamidun majid. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. If your daughter is 15 or older, you need to have a discussion about marriage with her. You need to have that discussion now, not when she comes one day to you and says, "Oh, I like this boy." إن الله يعمل من أذن والإحسان وإداء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون. اذكروا الله يذكركم فاستجب لكم فأقيموا الصلاة